Hey y'all, filmmaker Ron K. Armstrong here. And today I want to give you my take, my review on the Black Panther trailer, which was just released. And as you know, social media is buzzing about the trailer. Uh, a lot of people had to comment on that. And I want to give you my take on the trailer and a little bit more um, that'll give you some context around why there are certain things in the, the movie itself. Um, the film is directed by Ryan uh, Kugler, who also did Creed. I didn't see Creed, I heard it was a very, very good film. But let me say, um, as far as this trailer is concerned for Black Panther, I did enjoy it. I did like it. When I saw it, I was very excited about it. So kudos to Ryan Kugler. But we have to wait and see, because um, as with Star Wars, The Force Awakens, I think uh, it did a lot of these uh, bait and switch, because we thought that, um, I think it was the character Finn um, was going to be a Jedi. Uh, the African-American lead in the film who played the stormtrooper, turns out he wasn't a Jedi. He wasn't even a competent lightsaber duelist. And he got his butt kicked. So I'm hoping that with Black Panther, they don't pull a bait and switch on us to where we think we're going to get something very exciting, um, a very powerful superhero, and then suddenly he becomes very weak and, and needs help from other people. But anyway, we, we saw um, Black Panther's introduction into Captain America's Civil War, which was an awesome film. I did think they held back his, his character a bit. He wasn't as dynamic as I would like to have seen him to be, because compared to Tony Stark, um, Black Panther T'Challa is supposed to be a genius, a scientific genius. Um, and he's a king as well. So we didn't get to see that kind of like intellectual prowlessness about him, like how, how really smart he was in Civil War, but it wasn't his film. So I, you know, I think it was more about show, showcasing, showcasing Captain America and what Captain America could do and the, the pivotal story around that versus um, going in depth um, with, um, Black Panther. So the trailer basically show, just to, to give you guys, you know, a roundabout view, which you've already seen, the trailer um, shows some really good um, shots of Wakanda and um, a futuristic Wakanda, which is what it's supposed to be. But there is a bit of controversy on social media because they did show some aspects that were what I felt was traditional African culture surrounding, um, you know, face painting, masks, spears, and things of that nature. Some people felt um, that it was uh, basically stereotyping uh, Africans or black people as, you know, primitive and spear chuckers and things of that nature, which I totally understand that, but I'll speak a bit about that, um, why I think they introduced it that way. But this film is epic in a sense that it has really a large African-American cast. And if you, if you go down on the list, you'll see just reading, it's got Chaz Bozeman as uh, Black Panther, Lupita Nyong'o, um, Michael B. Jordan, Angela Bassett, uh, Martin Freeman, Forrest Whitaker, and Felicia Rosat. And that's just some of them, to name a few, who are in this film. So um, it's one of the first films I've seen that have this this grand scale. I'm sure it's shot for over $100 million, where it's predominantly, um, I shouldn't say African-American, I should say predominantly black cast. And I think it's wonderful. It looks, the production value looks great. Some areas of concern for me are the fact that I didn't see a lot of Black Panther. I saw, you know, a lot of different scenes showcasing different things. Um, but as far as Black Panther kicking ass, there were, you know, it, it kind of peppered it throughout, but to me, not enough. And um, a lot of the scenes we did see also had the door Milaje, which is, I think, his, um, you know, bodyguards, the two female bodyguards. And I believe that Tanish uh, had wrote an, uh, a, a comic book version of Black Panther where there is this, um, this subplot or sub-story of the Dormelage and lesbian love affair, which I would not be interested in seeing in this film at all. So that's something that I hope they don't focus on. Early uh, reports, uh, people are saying that it does focus a lot on the Dormelage, which to me that's problematic. And I kind of... You know, they're saying they're trying to make that to be like a spinoff, kind of like similar to Wonder Woman and the Amazonian island and do, do the same thing with this. Let's first have a good Black Panther movie and then we can talk about branching that off. And you see this, this whole thing now with the studios, they're trying to create this universe now. You've got, you know, you've got King Kong. And they, they, I didn't think that film was really good, but they're trying to set it up for the King Kong versus Godzilla. 
And then you have the mummy, and that mummy is supposed to have its own universe where out of the mummy uh, comes out of the, uh, you'll see um, more stories like um, The Invisible Man, Werewolf, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, things like that, you know. Um, so they, they're trying to create these spinoffs and, you know, how it's all about money and, and franchises. So anyway, um, this film looks awesome. You know, I, I, again, I, I loved it. Just some areas of concern not to adjust the whole spear chucker and the, the showing the Africans as kind of primitive or the, or the people of Wakanda as kind of primitive when in fact that, you know, vibranium put them on the map. If you don't know what vibranium is, it's this metal that is, is impervious to almost anything. Black Panther made his uniform or his suit out of that. And um, they, they people are just concerned that here you have this the high culture society, the only society on the planet in that universe that is that technologically advanced. No other, um, sorry, no other country on the planet is that technologically advanced. So people are saying, well, why are they showing um, the, the Africans as, you know, with the spears? And to me, this goes back to um, giving tribute to your ancestors and Africa is really about that. It's, the culture is very heavily dependent upon um, paying tribute to ancestors, understanding your heritage, communication um, with the dead, and bridging that gap. You know, it's, it's something that hasn't been tackled in the African-American community where you'll see that there is um, a lot of criticism of those who who are, are not, you know, maybe interracially, who may be, you know, biracial and, uh, or who, you know, don't listen to rap. They're always kind of seen as not, not black enough, you know, and there's a lot of criticism on that. But yet, you know, one thing we don't look at that's a very important aspect is that we have people who are afraid or in some who are even ostracized from their own culture, and I mean African culture. Um, we can trace our heritage back to Africa, and yet the majority of African Americans don't practice a traditional African religion. It's either Christianity, it's uh, uh, Catholicism, it's Islam, but it's very rarely will you see it being something like a, a Yoruba or, you know, or, or Voodoo or Voodoo you know, a comedic religion. We just don't practice that. And it goes back to, you know, the brainwashing uh, that we've encountered um, when we were brought here and conditioned um, to hate certain aspects of ourselves. Chief among that is our own concept of God and spirituality. So, you know, there was one YouTuber who I saw come out with a video and who, who basically with just, just harsh venom, just, attacked the uh, comic, the black comic book nerds for defending the fact that uh, the Black Panther trailer had clips of traditional um, African masks, face paint, and, you know, um, the whole spears and things. And I, I've never seen that, that type of hatred for the culture. And, and this individual went on to say, well, well show me any... Um, CEO of a Fortune 500 company who's walking around with spears and masks, and um, you know, and I, I think that that's a valid point, and I think that this gentleman, what he's trying to say is that um, African men and women need to think about economic um, upliftment, you know, focusing on economic upliftment to get out of the oppression and racism that um, we find ourselves in today. But on the same token, I would say, if you, if you saw Stanley Kubrick's film, Eyes Wide Shut, if you know anything, um, then you have to understand that a lot of the, 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 what we call as the global elite practice Satanism and have the underground rituals and things of that nature, which is how they got to the position of power they're in now by stealing and co-opting a culture that's not theirs, um, our culture, and using it against us. So um, this reverence for our ancestors, African tradition, I think it's very important, which I've never been a big Black Panther fan, but I think what Black Panther stands for is very important because the story of Black Panther focuses on a lot of positive aspects. And I'm not, I don't know if the movie's going to do that. I haven't seen the movie. But the idea of the ancestors, the idea of the community, you know, the African society as, as, as a, you know, community band together, the, the idea of herbs, natural herbs, and how 
uh, T'Challa takes the herbs and becomes stronger and has these visions of the future and the past and um, going through a rite of passage to become Black Panther. I think embedded in all of that really speaks to the fact that this is um, talking to us about our heritage, about our culture. And this, this, this story is not about a superhero, Black Panther, but it's about bringing back our culture. It's about us celebrating our culture. I mean, when I saw the trailer, one uh, big, big contention that I did have was the idea of rap music overlaid. You know, I don't, I think that there is a big movement to try and to dumb down society as a whole, especially African-American society, by introducing rap music, which to me is very demonic and evil because it, um, it focuses on money, women, um, and drugs. But, you know, hey, I'm over, I'm, you know, I, I kind of understand the marketing that they're looking for. They're trying to bring in the youth who are, who are very conditioned to love rap to come see this film. So I think if they stay true to the concept of Black Panther um, being a superhero, but about African traditional values and culture, then I think it's going to be a great film. I think it could be a big box office hit. And if, you know, the buzz on social media is in any in indication, I think it could break records. The film was due to release in February, I think February 16th, 2018, 16, 2018. Um, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a little ways away, but the teaser trailer, which showed a lot, if you want to call it a teaser, I think we made a huge impact. I think it, it it's, it took a step in the right direction. And um, let me just go back in closing to talk again about the controversy of showing, you know, uh, the traditional African people look with the kente cloth and all that. I think that um, when you look at our ancestors, um, the ones who are, have passed away, like Dr. John Henry Clark, if you don't know who he is, then shame on you, go do your research. Man was brilliant. Um, you need to um, understand that I, I, as, as though I give much respect and praise to these people like Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben uh, Jamakinen, um, Dr. Smalls, you know, all of these men who did such great work in bringing forth um, our culture or, or kind of like um, reincarnating it. Um, and this happened back in the 90s. And these individuals, let me just show you some books that they published, like his check out the Diop, brilliant man, Civilization of Barbarism. If you haven't gotten this book, get this book. Um, another one is uh, We the Black Jews. This is by Dr. Ben Jamakinen, who also did Black Man, um, and uh, I think it's Black Man and the Nile and his family. That's a good book. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is a really good book if you want to get this. But um, I think all of these um, individuals were brilliant in, in bringing out our culture and documenting and publishing it and going against the lies that were being told by famous Egyptologists and white supremacists. But the one thing I think that they all kind of fell short on was of only the documented things they uh, fail to focus on the cultural aspect and the religious aspect, which we can't get away from. And I think Dr. Um, ben and Dr. Clark were the closest to try and get at this, was that, you know, the youth up and coming during that time, um, the, the um, mid nineties needed a culture, not just information for information's sake, but they needed something to live by and they needed a community that would enforce that culture. And um, though their teachings were brilliant, I think that these men fell a little bit short on, on instilling a type of uh, a cultural um, repository for them to fall back on. And I think one of the closest books that came to doing that was uh, the Metu Neta by Ra Nefa Amin, which actually um, gave you a step-by-step -step guide to practicing a comedic religion. And the one thing that I don't see today is I see a lot of people um, who talk a lot of like comedic spirituality and, you know, they, they're, they're very um, pro-Egypt, pro-Kemet, but I don't see a lot of them actually practicing as a spiritual way of life. And that's where I think the movement fell short. Um, so I'm hoping that the, the movie Black Panther will revitalize our interest in following a traditional African religion, a traditional way of life. And again, I think 
in the African American community, community, there is this, you know, recoil from anything that has to do with African religion, you know, and we, the, it, there tends to be these boxes that you check off to make sure you're black enough. It's like, oh, you know, are you in a black relationship? Check. Do you support black businesses? Check. But part of, there's no checkbox to say, are you practicing a traditional African religion? Are you paying tribute to the ancestors? You know, yes, there's a checkbox to say, have you read, check out the Diop's book, you know, but, or, or Chancellor Williams works on the destruction of black civilization. But what's important is putting this into practice and living it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think Black Panther contains some brilliant ideas on African spiritual values, African community, and that tends to be, um, which I hope it is not on the peripheral, um, but you know, if all else fails, hopefully we'll get a kick-ass movie about a king who's a brilliant, brilliant intellectual surpassing Tony Stark, and also who has um, a badass physical ability to kick butt. You know, and um, there's two bodyguards, Adora, Balazs, Kid Butt, too, and we're going to see all three of them in this, this, uh, this holy trinity. You know, so I think you know um, we're we will see as time goes on what happens with this film as as more trailers come out, and hopefully um, each one will be as more exciting, uh, more exciting than the, the, the previous leading up to the February 16, 2018 premiere of the movie, which is they timed it right during Black History Month. So, um, and hopefully, and I'm, I think it will, I could be wrong, but I think it will break some box office records, you know, and revitalize the uh, African American community interest in a spiritual culture that is our culture, where we're not co-opting Christianity or Islam or Judaism or, or Catholicism. So, that's all I have to say. Um, please comment in the comment box if you have any um, things that you'd like to contribute. If you like this video, um, subscribe to my channel um, and like the video. And also there's a little bell there you can click if you, and it'll notify you when there's a live stream. So until my next broadcast, this is filmmaker Ron K. Armstrong, and that is all for now.